most children, monolingual or bilingual, demonstrate typical language development. Yet some children in both populations have a disorder that impacts the linguistic development. One such disorder is developmental language disorder, DLD. It affects the language skills in 7% of a population. Another more familiar, though less frequent disorder, is autistic spectrum disorder, ASD. It affects linguistic, social, and cognitive skills in around 1% of a population. A question that often arises is whether it is possible to grow up bilingual if you suffer from one of these disorders. Or maybe it is better to be monolingual in such a case. To address this question, we are pleased to have with us an expert in the study of disorders among bilingual children, Dr. Natalia Meir from the Department of English Literature and Linguistics and the Gonda Brain Research Center. Shalom, Natalia. Hello, Sharon. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's my pleasure. I want to ask you a few questions. And let's start with the most straightforward one. In developmental language disorder, we diagnose the impairment by difficulty with language. We say that children are at least a year behind their peers in their language abilities. What is the role of language in the diagnosis of autistic spectrum disorder? ASD is an umbrella term, autism spectrum disorder. ASD is an umbrella term for a range of neurodevelopmental disorders. ASD is diagnosed on two symptom clusters. The first cluster refers to pervasive deficiencies in social communication and social interaction. The second cluster refers to restrictive and repetitive patterns of behavior, interest, and activities. Language per se is not part of the ASD diagnosis. However, language delays and language impairments are the, among the first symptoms observed in children with the ASD. The spectrum refers to a wide range of abilities in these children across different domains, nonverbal non abilities, language and autistic features. So with respect to language, there are children who are minimally verbal, who do not acquire even single words for communicative purposes, and there are children who attain functional language. And those who do attain functional language are divided into two subgroups. The first subgroup shows intact structural language skills, intact morphosyntax, intact phonology, and the other subgroup shows impaired structural language skills, very similar to the ones observed in children with a DLD. So in this case, we are talking about comorbidity, a comorbid um, developmental language disorder in children with autism. Across the entire spectrum, regardless of structural language skills, children show problems in the domain of pragmatics. Uh, such problems as turn taking, uh, metaphor comprehension, idiom comprehension, the use of referential expressions. So language is not part of the diagnosis uh, in ASD, yet language problems are present in all the children with ASD to a different degree. We know that DLD by definition applies to both languages of a bilingual child. We do not see an impairment in a single language. Is this also the case for ASD? So research on the interface of bilingualism and autism is still in its infancy. Most of the studies that have been conducted up till now are on cognitive abilities of these children or on the skills in the societal language. There are very few studies that looked into both languages of these children. For example, I can tell you about a study that we conducted with, together with Roman Bogorovsky on morphosyntactic abilities of bilingual children looking into the heritage language and into the societal language. So our studies show that first of all we confirmed the two subgroups also in bilingual children with, Ill, uh, with ASD, one subgroup with, in, with intact structural language skills and another subgroup with impaired structural language skills in both languages. So these children who have comorbidity of uh, ASD and DLD, they show problems with structural language skills in both languages. They make pro have problems with um, relative clauses with WH questions in both languages. With respect to pragmatics, we need to learn. New studies are need uh, to be conducted. However, I assume that that will be the case. We will see pragmatic uh, problems in both uh, languages. So we shouldn't look at both languages then? Absolutely. Absolutely. In order to uh, uh, obtain a full picture of linguistic abilities of the child, we need to look into his, her, or both languages. As we do for all bilinguals. 
That's now, true. I've heard that some children with ASD are actually good with languages, that they are sort of can be expert in many languages. Is this true? It is true. So first of all, uh, autism spectrum disorder represents a wide range of abilities. So there are children who are savants in different domains, and there are children who are savants in language. So there are some who can acquire multiple languages. One of the best documented cases is the case of Christopher, who could speak, read, and translate in 20 languages, and he could not do at the same time the basic theory of mind tasks that any four or five uh, year old could do. Today we see that many of children, some of the children, acquire English, uh, which is not the ambient language of the environment. So a child was born to Russian-speaking parents or Hebrew-speaking parents, and this is the language of the home environment, goes to school. Hebrew is the language of the home environment. But this child turns to English, and English becomes a dominant language for this child. And he imposes the use of this language among the siblings and parents. Um, we see such cases also in children with uh, speaking Arabic, so children favor subgroup of children, I must mention, that a subgroup of children favor the use of standard Arabic rather than spoken Arabic. And even what is more interesting, we know some children invent their own language and they insist on using this invented language by the parents. This sounds very challenging for the parents, I must say. True. On the other hand, people are afraid that being bilingual might be a difficulty for a child with ASD. Is this true? Unfortunately, this myth is still alive and professionals provide guidelines to the parents to refrain from bilingual environments and to adopt a, mon a monolingual approach when raising a bilingual child with ASD. Um, the concern is that it might be challenging, that it might confuse a child. The empirical evidence shows that there is no evidence for a negative effect of bilingualism. Most of the studies that there are no differences between monolingual and bilingual children, neither on autistic uh, features nor on cognitive and language abilities. On the contrary, there are several studies that show that bilingualism might be a mitigating factor for these children. So uh, some of these uh, some children might have bad executive function skills, some of them might have better language skills, they can produce better stories. So bilingual is not, uh, doesn't have a detrimental effect. On the contrary, it might have even an advantage for children with ASD, mitigating some of their core autistic features. So it actually could be an advantage being a bilingual if you have ASD? Exactly. One of the core features of, of, of autism is impaired theory of mind. And bilingualism might enhance theory of mind, meaning that bilinguals will help these children. Uh, it will help them to understand what the others think and how the others feel. So bilinguals might be even a benefit for these children. Not that we are going to use this for treatment, God forbid, but yes, it is a benefit. Well, I have a last question. When we talk about bilingualism, we often refer to the background, to the environment, to age of onset of bilingualism, ex length of exposure, amount of exposure, as variables, factors which affect the language development of a bilingual child. How do these affect the language of children with ASD? So the picture is, co uh, is a very complex in children with autism. The link between input exposure and the intake and output is not as straightforward as in neurotypical individuals. Um, as I've just told you, there are children who just choose the language that is not in the environment at all and they become dominant in that language. So um, sometimes the cognitive flexibility does not allow these children to shift to a new language. So there are multiple factors that might affect uh, the language use, not necessarily input and uh, input and the exposure in the environment. So children choose the language which they believe is the language that they need in the environment. Sometimes the language of home might be the language of comfort, the language of love and warmth, and that's why children prefer using this language and not the language of the society, which has this social load which might uh, uh, slow down the language acquisition. 
Thank you. This was very, very interesting and informative, and I think we know way more now about how, what, what role language plays in autism and in autism among bilingual children. I really want to thank you very much, and especially I think what we could learn is that if you are bilingual and you have autism, you keep both languages, there's no reason to stop being bilingual if you have ASD, and I would say also if you have DLD. Children can acquire two languages, even if they have some other impairments. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, Sharon, for inviting me. The pleasure is all mine. Mine as well. Mm -hmm.